So, good morning, everyone, and welcome to morning prayer. Lovely to see you all. Um, Florence, you're outside somewhere. That looks nice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure where you are, but it uh, looks nice. On the way uh, home from school. My screen is behaving really weirdly. Uh, but anyway, um, are, you, are, are you getting a kind of weird flashing screen or is everything working all right at your end? Walking no, walking. you're fine, except you occasionally sort of freeze. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Try and move nearer the Wi-Fi in a minute. Um, okay, but let's make a start. Well, <laughs> maybe while I'm relocating myself, um, Gary, can you tell us about the Bishop of Paris? No, I can't. <laughs> no, I can't because I, I haven't opened the box, my reference box in yet. Well, um, <laughs> this is uh, St. Denis. St. Denis. St. Denis, who um, all I know, 12th century, sent over to as a missionary to Paris. Mm. And then he and um, various others got uh, beheaded and were martyred and buried on Montmartre. You know that region in Paris called Montmartre, which means the Hill of Martyrs, yeah? Um, no, never. Oh, yeah. no, I didn't know that. So there we are. Uh, and the other thing I know about Denise is that um, St. Nicholas and Chiswick, their hall is... St. Denis Hall. <laughs> they obviously have a particular connection to him. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. I think that was in. That wasn't in. Okay, the book. <laughs> but um, anyway, yeah, he was a good man. And uh, then we have um, Robert Gross Test, we also remember today, Bishop of Lincoln. So when I said 12th century, I'm getting him confused with gross test. No, um, Denise is, was, was beheaded about 250. Yeah, he's third century. And then um, the, the other chap, gross test, is, is 13th century, uh, Bishop of Lincoln. And um, I did read quickly the biography this morning. Um, he was an intellectual visionary unafraid to confront others when he saw the need, who was a figure of immense importance to the 13th century church. So we remember them today. Okay, let's make a start with our service. Oh Lord, open our lips. And I will claim your praise. Your praise. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. 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 So, um, Gary, would you do the odd verses and maybe Leslie do the even ones? And while you're reading the psalm, I'm just going to try and move to a bit of the house with slightly better wi-fi if i can so you you read the psalm uh if you that, that me yeah is that all right yeah I, you, voice went at that point yeah I'll, okay. I'll, 
I'll try and relocate. Okay, you 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 get on with okay. reading the psalm. Um, okay, and I'll try and move. Okay, you go ahead. Okay, hear my prayer, O oh God. <clears throat> Hide not yourself from my petition. Give heed to me and answer me. I am restless in my complaining. I am alarmed at the voice of the enemy and at the clamour of the wicked. For they would bring down evil upon me and are set against me in fury. My heart is disquieted within me and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling are come upon me and a horrible dread has overwhelmed me. And I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then I would fly away and be at rest. Then would I flee far away and make my lodging in the wilderness. I would make haste to escape from the stormy wind and tempest. Confuse their tongues, O Lord, and divide them, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about on her walls. Whoops, sorry. Mischief and trouble are in, them, in her midst. Wickedness <coughs> walks in her streets. Oppression and guile never leave her squares. For it was not an open enemy that reviled me, but then I could have borne it. Nor was it my adversary that puffed himself up against me, for then I would have hid myself from him. But it was even you, one like myself, my companion and my own familiar friend. We took sweet counsel together and walked with the multitude in the house of God. Let death come suddenly upon them. Let them go down alive to the pit, for wickedness inhabits their dwellings, their As very for hearts. Me, I will call upon God and the Lord will deliver me. In the evening and morning and at noonday, I will pray and make my supplication and he shall hear my voice. He shall redeem my soul in peace from the battle waged against me, for many have come upon me. God, who is enthroned of old, will hear and bring them down. They will not repent, for they have no fear of God. My companion stretched out his hands against his friend and has broken his covenant. His speech was softer than butter, though war was in his heart. His words were smoother than oil, yet are they naked swords. Cast your burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you, and will not let the righteous fall forever. But those who are bloodthirsty and deceitful, O God, you will bring down to the pit of destruction. They shall not live out half their days, but my trust shall be in you, O Lord. Glory to the Father, Father and, and to the Son, the Son and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was, it was in, the in the beginning, is and now, now, and shall be, and forever. Shall be forever. Amen. Amen. Great. Well, that, okay. Any thoughts about that psalm? Well, it's headed complaint about a friend's treachery. Mm. Ah. <laughs> So, uh, which is the worst kind of treachery, isn't it? Really? Yes. Yeah, somebody you trust mm. who lets mm. you down, and he feels really bitter, mm. but feels that God is the one he can, in whom he can trust. <coughs> yeah, but it was sweet counsel. Didn't they walk in? What does it say about sweet counsel? Yes, they did. Yes. You, they were really close and shared together, and now. This friend has turned on him. Yeah, well, that is the most terrible thing, isn't it, really? Yes. That kind of betrayal by someone you think you trust. Yes, and, exactly. And they and you realise, yeah, that you can't. That's there's there's it is a real it's yeah, it's bad when people who you expect to behave badly do think bad. <laughs> but when someone you trust uh, does, yeah, it's really mm. dreadful. Yeah. 
All right. Okay. Well, let's read our first um, passage. We're still in Kings. Um, who would like to read that? John Gill, would you like to read that for us? Well, John Gill would like to, but he's still Aplis. You're, you're Aplis. Aplis, yes. John Gill. Do you want me to share the screen? I think that would help. That could help, couldn't it, if I can manage to do it. Uh, hang on. Let's put that effort. Where is it? This is it. Um, da, 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 da. Can you see that? Yep. <coughs> <coughs> now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, "Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel." But Elisha said, "As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live." I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Eli Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho draw near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. And Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they were both standing by the Jordan. The, then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other, till the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in the, whir in the whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and his horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water, saying, Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. When the company of prophets who were at Jericho saw him at a distance, they declared, The spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. They came to meet him and bowed to the ground before him. They said to him, See now, we are, have fifty strong men among your servants. Please let them go and seek your master. It may be that the spirit of the Lord has caught him up and thrown him down on some mountain or into some valley. He responded, No, do not send them. But when they urged him until he was ashamed, he said, Send them. So they sent fifty men who searched for three days, but did not find him. When they came back to him, he had remained at Jericho. He said to them, Did I not say to you, do not go? Okay, thank you, John. So that's a fantastic story, isn't it? Um, of Elijah passing on his role to Elisha um, and um, it's very interesting the whole kind of 
um, waters parting. It's such a re repeating motif in the Bible, this parting of the seas, parting of the waters. Um, and, you know, it's like sometimes God will make a path clear for us, yeah, uh, for his purpose. And you see that time and again. And then you get this wonderful, um, you know, picture of Elijah being scooped up into the heavens and the mantle falling. It's rather dramatic how Elisha tears his clothes in two. That seems a little, <laughs> like, oh! <laughs> and then puts on the mantle. It's incredibly dramatic, yeah? yeah. Um, and then he strikes the water and it's parted for him as it was parted for Elijah, yeah? And then they never find Elijah's body. So it's a mystery what happened to him. Yeah. How was it the prophets were expecting uh, Elijah to depart? Sorry, John? How, how, how did, were the prophets aware that the Lord was going to take the master away. Were they? Yeah. That's what it says. But what does yeah. it say? Yeah. Well, they kept know? saying to Elisha, you know that... You know that the Lord will take your master away from me. Uh -huh. Well, I guess they are prophets, aren't they? They are a company of prophets. Mm -hmm. So, you know, perhaps they're listening to God and God has indicated to them that this is going to happen, you yeah? know? But... It he didn't indicate that they wouldn't be able to find him. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe he did, but maybe they, maybe they couldn't believe that, yeah? Um, maybe they, they couldn't believe that. They thought, like, well, he must be. He must have been just swept up in a whirlwind and cast down somewhere. I guess you would think that if, some, if you were walking along with someone and a sort of tornado <laughs> came along, so swept you. You would think, oh, cracky, I better go and look for their body, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Even if God was so saying. Elisha is. Elisha has got his mantle already. Yeah. Stop that. Right, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, yes, he's got the mantle already. Um, but I suppose they want to respectfully bury uh, Elijah. Yes. So they go mm. looking for him. It's a great story, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is this the company of 50 who didn't get consumed by fire? I don't know. Or are they a different 50? Are they a different 50? <laughs> <laughs> there were yeah. several 50s, weren't there? Well, there were, there were, two, there were two 50. When, yeah, when... <laughs> That makes a hundred, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Ahaziah, whatever it is, sends for Elijah, what, <coughs> two lots of 50 get consumed by fire and then a third 50 gem. We read that yesterday, but I haven't got, I actually haven't got my physical Bible to hand, so I can't see what, anyway, but, uh, so maybe. All right, let's read um, Acts 24. Um, Sola, do you want to read that for us? Yeah. Some days later, when Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, he sent, to Paul, he sent for Paul and heard him speak concerning faith in Christ Jesus. And as he discussed justice, self-control, and the coming judgment, Felix became frightened and said, Go away for the present. When I, have, when I have an opportunity, I will send for you. At the same time, he hoped that money would be given to him by Paul. And for that reason, he used to send for him very often and converse with him. After two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Porcio Festus. And since he, was, he wanted to grant the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. Three days after Festus had arrived in the province, he went up from Caesarea to Jerusalem 
where the chief priests and the leaders of the Jews gave him a report against Paul. They appealed to him and requested as a favor to them against Paul to have him transferred to Jerusalem. They were in fact planning an ambush to kill him along the way. Festus replied that Paul was being kept at Caesarea and that he himself intended to go there shortly. So he said, let those of you who have the authority come down with me. And if there is anything wrong about the man, let them accuse him. After he had stayed among them for not more than eight or 10 days, he went down to Caesarea. The next day, he took his seat on the tribunal and ordered Paul to be brought. When he arrived, the Jews who had gone down from Jerusalem surrounded him, bringing many serious charges against him, which they could not prove. Paul said in his defense, I have in no way committed an offense against the law of the Jews or against the temple or against the emperor. But Festus, wishing to do the Jews a favor, asked Paul, do you wish to go to Jerusalem and be tried there before me on these charges? Paul said, I am appealing to the emperor's tribunal. This is where I should be tried. I have done no wrong to the Jews, as you, have ve as you very well know. Now, if I am in the wrong and have committed something for which I deserve to die, I am not trying to escape death. But if there is nothing to their charges against me, no one can turn me over to them. I appeal to the emperor. Then Festus, after he had conferred with his counsel, replied, you have appealed to the emperor. To the emperor, you will go. Okay, so uh, Paul is getting into quite hot water here. I mean, he's stuck in Caesarea and he's been stuck there sort of, even though he's under sort of fairly comfortable, probably more like house arrest rather than prison. Um, he's been there for two years and now it's like he's going to be sent to Rome for trial which doesn't go well for him, as we know. Um, so but presumably those chaps who were fasting before they could kill him might have either given up or died, you'd have thought by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. They must have <laughs> died. Um, presum yeah, presumably they just gave up, and um, but they haven't kind of gone away, have they? They're still really <laughs> Um, yeah, so rather sad. I think really in a way it would have been better for Paul to have been, I don't know, well... Well, it was his decision to appear to go to Rome. It was his decision to go to Rome, yeah. I but it looked like um, Festus wouldn't have, was wanted to, uh, you know, do what the Jews wanted, so he wasn't going to kind of be released under Festus anyway, I suppose. No, no. Um, yeah. So it's kind of moving towards a tragic end, really. Okay, let's read the responsory. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me Take not, me not o, Lord. o Lord. Be not be far not from far. me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Okay, let's um, just come out of that and have a little bit of prayer time. Um, just into my prayer list, okay. There we go, okay. Lord, um, thank you for this time together this morning and for your presence among us. And we thank you for those stories, perhaps particularly inspiring that 
passing on of the mantle that we see from Elijah to Elisha. And uh, we all, Lord, have to pass on the mantle sooner or later. Uh, so help us to, to do that really continually, trying to pass on our faith, um, especially to our children and our children's children. Um, and we lift to you those who uh, have asked for prayer by name, Nikkei Adasaki Nolayinka, Jamie Lee Irie, Jenny Figaro, Christopher and Vivian Golis, Pete Jadhav, David Kimpton, Anna Lee, Juan Manuel Linares, Joan Martinez, Noel Morrison, Phyllis Riley, Betty Seaman, Edwina Turner, uh, Linda Woods, Martha and Ezra Prescott and all the children at Hope Primary School in Bulawayo, and for Dia Sharma and her family too. Lord, give us hope and comfort in times of trouble and bring healing in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself. And so bring us at last to your heavenly city where we shall see you face to face through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, using the traditional version of the Lord's Prayer, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks Thank you, God. God. Amen. Amen. Great. Um,